Welcome everyone. I'm Jason Chapin, Director of Workforce Development at the Westchester County Association. And I'm very pleased to be with Patrick Barrett, Department Chair of Respiratory Care Program at Westchester Community College, and Kwame White, Respiratory Care Program graduate and employee at Elizabeth Seton Children's. We're here today to talk about a generous grant from the Entergy Charitable Foundation and how it helps students and employers like Elizabeth Seton Children's. Welcome guys. Thank you, Jason, glad to be here. Same, very glad to be here, thank you. All right, so let's start with Patrick. Patrick, tell us about WCC's respiratory care program and what makes it so successful. Well, Jason, I think the reason why the program is so successful is because everything that we do is aligned with the mission of Westchester Community College, which is really just to provide affordable, high quality and accessible education to a diverse community of students. And that's pretty much what we do here. Um, we target those uh, specific uh, students in the demographic area to be able to provide such services. Great, thank you. And, uh, you know, we're still in a pandemic. None of us ever expected we'd be here, but I'm sure that posed some challenges for you. What were some of the things that you had to deal with uh, with the program and uh, some of the students? Major, major challenges. So the shutdown happened approximately last March for us in the academic world. And what happened was um, our clinical rotation sites, the sites where we normally send our students, the hospitals that we normally send our students to, no longer were allowing students to come into the hospital because of the pandemic. So a lot of what we had to do with our students was um, we had to transition very quickly to remote learning, which respiratory therapy is not a curriculum that is normally taught online. So um, the biggest transition that we have to make going from our normal in-person teaching to taking our labs and our didactic lectures to 100% remote learning. All right, thanks, Patrick and Kwame. So tell me, what was it like for you as a student and some of the challenges you faced when we were in the middle of a pandemic and you're trying to finish the program? Um, well, first of all, thanks again for having me. Um, the pandemic, it, it, I feel like it was a challenge for me to say the least. I'm pretty sure it was a challenge for all my classmates as well. You know, it was more like I had to adapt and, you know, like Professor Barrett said, we switched to remote learning. We kind of had like a week or two to adjust, but they did a fantastic job keeping us on track. And, you know, also at the same time, the pandemic is going on, there was an entire social justice movement. So, you know, on one hand, I was dealing with not being able to go to school, clinical rotations. And um, on the other hand, you know, dealing with the realities of society. So it was it was a mental battle, but I'm glad I got through it. Yeah, I'm glad too. I'm also glad that we got a donation from the Energy Community or the Charitable Foundation which allowed us to provide some support to the students. You guys did all the hard work and got through the program, but then you had to take exams and get your state license and, and some other things. So I just wanted to um, ask you if that stipend uh, was helpful to you and the other students. Oh yeah, the stipend helped tremendously. And uh, my classmates I spoke to as well, they did say it helped. Um, I was able to pay for my exam fees. I was able to pay for test prep and, you know, I was working, you know, before the well, before the pandemic hit, I was working overnight and going to school in the daytime. So it was a little bit of an adjustment financially, but you know, I got through it and you know, thankful that I, I was able to adjust and adapt. And a huge part of that too that I can't put a price on is the professors. I can't say it enough. You know, they encouraged us, they led us. It was, you know, it was amazing. They only had a little bit of time and success was still an option. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And, and Patrick, tell us a little bit more about the success of the program. How many students uh, were in the program? And uh, tell us about um, um, how they did. So, um, you know, this class, uh, the class of 2020, the graduating class of 2020, you know, they were amazing. I can't talk enough about the resiliency of the students to, because I can only imagine if a pandemic such as this would have hit while I was a student in the program. And the way that they were able to seamlessly transition to that remote learning while still maintaining 
um, their composure, the level of dedication and determination. It, it was truly outstanding um, to watch. So we graduated 24 students. Um, and up until this day, we have a 88% pass rate on their licensure exam. So we have about, I would say 21 out of the 24 students are already registered respiratory therapists. And as far as employment goes, I believe we're at about 75% of them have already obtained full-time employment. So they are performing tremendously. That's great. Congratulations on that success. And I just have a few other questions for Kwame. So what do you want people to know about working at Elizabeth uh, Seton Children's now that you've been there for a while? Um, it's really an eye opener. It's an amazing place to be. Um, I, you know, I was able to go there for clinical rotations, uh, in my freshman year in the summer semester. So I got like a little bit of a sample of what they do. And, um, when I was able to, you know, hop on board with the team, um, they, there's just so much, <laughs> there's just so much to learn and, you know, so much to be a part of they try to make these kids feel like normal kids and that's my favorite part about going to work you know sometimes you forget it's a medical facility because these kids they wake up every day they're doing music therapy speech therapy um there's activities there's virtual school um sensory um activities you name it they have it and you know they just try to make them feel like normal kids even on weekends like they get to just sit in front of tv watch tv i mean watch tv eat cereal you know just be regular kids and you know i just love being a part of that yeah it's it's a wonderful organization and i think they work with about three thousand kids a year and it's uh, one of the largest of its kind and uh the more i learn about it the more i love about it and uh it's just great to hear that uh, you're having a great experience there uh, what what else do you want um, uh, people to know about Elizabeth Seaton and uh, working in respiratory care? Um, well, uh, I remember when I was a student, Professor Barrow always said that, you know, it feels like he's giving back whenever, you know, he's being a respiratory therapist. And that's what it feels like to me. I'm giving back. I'm helping these kids just be normal kids. And it's it's a fantastic feeling. And uh, Elizabeth Seaton the atmosphere it's it's a open and you know it's an open and safe environment where you can talk about what you think the kid needs and what you think is best for the kids and we come together as a team and make decisions we have an amazing leader who you know makes sure that we're heard and respiratory is respected and you know especially in these times respiratory is very important and i feel you know amazing it, it's just it's just amazing i'm so thankful <laughs> Great. All right. Uh, just before we finish, Patrick, is there anything else you wanted to say? Yes, absolutely. I want to um, thank uh, Entergy, the Westchester County Association, um, you, Jason, for really um, believing in what it is we're trying to do over here. And I'm sure, and I'm speaking on behalf of all the students, they're uh, extremely grateful for the stipend that was provided to them, the grant that was provided to them. It really helped a lot of the students get over that hump. Coming out of the program, when you're graduating, there's a lot of fees and you know different types of uh, expenses that are associated with just becoming a respiratory therapist. And with the grant that they were provided by Entergy, along with the Westchester County Association, it really alleviated some of the stresses, in addition to the normal everyday stresses of just living in the world during a pandemic, it really alleviated a lot of the stresses financially that the students needed at a really um, difficult time. So I wanna send a huge thank you to you know the team over there. Well, thank you. It's uh, nice of you to say that. And uh, Kwame, anything else you wanna share before we wrap up? I did. Um, two two things um, about, well, about Elizabeth Seaton, and I wanted to say a few words about WCC as well. But um, Elizabeth Seaton, it's a great place for a new therapist to start if you want to sharpen your skills. Um, also, seasoned respiratory therapists, if you've never had experience with kids, it's a great place to start. And like I said, you know, we have a phenomenal team. Um, you know, so definitely if you want to come on board as a therapist here, it's great. And with WCC as well, my advice to any 
anyone thinking about going into respiratory or currently in the program, keep at it. You know, waking up 5 a.m. to go to clinicals and breaking night studying is all worth it because, you know, I'm a success story. <laughs> it, it, it helps. It works. Just keep at it. Don't give up. Well, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for all that you do. Uh, it was great to hear you talk about the Respiratory Care Program and Elizabeth Seaton Children's and uh, the grant. And uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you and, uh, and working with you on this project. Uh, thank you. Uh, take care. Uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jason.